Hello everyone, Nate Bauer here, bringing you another Photoshop tutorial brought to you by Questional.com. I've been getting a lot of feedback from my previous tutorial. People are stating that though the tutorial worked really well for darker images, didn't work quite as well for images that already had bright skin tones, such as the image here. So I'd like to go ahead and extend the previous tutorial into something that'll work a little bit better for high, uh, brighter images. Alright, so I've got my image here. I'd first like to thank Nicole Powell for allowing me to use her image. It's a great image and works really well for this tutorial, so definitely thank her for that. So the first thing I'm noticing is, though her skin tones actually look relatively nice at the moment, the background and overall image is still a little bit dull and dark. So the first thing I'd like to do is go ahead and throw our levels on here. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this a little bit quickly. Just going to raise those uh, colors just a tad here. Maybe my greens on this side too. Maybe not that much. And go to my blue finally and bring those up. Alright. So going back to my layers, here's my before and there's my after that's definitely looking nicer. Increased my contrast a lot and definitely brightened up the image overall. Her skin, though it's actually looking really bright, I'd like to soften up just a tad to bring more of the focus back to her eyes and other facial features. Alright, so what I'd like to do is, though most people would originally most people I see like to use a Gaussian blur with a soft mask. And though I, it does look relatively nice at the end, you lose a little bit too much detail. And I'd like to go ahead and prevent that from happening as much as possible. And one way I found that works really well without losing too much detail is to actually use a reduced noise filter. But to do that, we have to duplicate our, our background here because it is going to completely edit the entire layer. And we always want it to stay non-destructive. Alright, so with that new layer selected, I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, and Reduce Noise. Now I'd like to go a little bit far, of course, because I can bring it back down in the end. You can see your skin is already softening up quite a bit. However, I'm also losing a lot of detail everywhere else. Her hair, for example, is starting to look a little bit blurred. So I'm going to hit OK there, and now I'm going to go to Layer, and I'm going to apply a new layer mask that's already hiding everything. So now the, mask, now the layer is completely hidden. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, I'm going to grab my brush here, and as you can see I'm using a zero harness, a soft brush. So with that mask selected, I'd like to go ahead and paint that softened skin back on. This way I'm going to bring my flow back up. This way I can, I can uh, apply this to just her skin tones without editing too much, too much of her other features here, and definitely keep those lines and contrasted points intact. So my goal here is to simply zoom around to areas that don't have a lot of contrast and that don't have a lot of lines. If I went over eyebrows, for example, I'm simply going to lose quality there, something I not I don't want to do. Now one thing I see a lot, specifically in magazine covers, for example, is people will soften just one part of a person, not realizing that the rest of them still looks a little bit sharp compared to the compared to her face, for example. So never forget that if you're if you're uh, softening one part of their skin, to completely do everything else as well. Now I went over a chin a little bit, so I'd like to go ahead and hit X to invert my color, zoom in just a tad, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller by hitting the left bracket key, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get that line back in there a bit. There we go, double click my, uh, my uh, magnifying glass to get it back to 100%, and I'm going to hold down Alt or Option if you're on the Mac, and I'm going to select my mask, and, you, and that's what I'm working with there. Looks kind of interesting, but it works phenomenally well for this. Now I'm noticing her skin is still a little bit fake. We lost a little bit more detail than I'd like. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opacity. I'm going to drop it down probably to about half or so and see what that looks like. Yeah, I'm thinking that adds a nice effect. All right. Now one thing I would like to see this profile image have is a little vignetting to draw the focus back to her face. So I'd like to do that. I'd like to do it in a little bit of a unique way. So I'm going to just to make a, a regular layer here. I'm going to drop my flow back down, probably to about 10% or so. And I'm going to grab a bit bigger brush, still with a zero harness. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and make a vignetting effect that's a bit rough, that's not completely unison on each side. So I'm going to, with my low flow, I'm going to go ahead and click down and draw. I'm going to draw a little bit roughly here. There we go. And because my flow is low, I can always go back over. I got a little blemish there on her face. No worries, I can fix that in just a second. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a little bit extra on the outside, give it a little bit of zooming effect. In this corner up here. There we go. Now I'm going to create a new layer mask. 
with my, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can mask out that little portion there. There we go. That looks nice. Now I'm going to take that layer and put it on a soft light blending mode to add a nice vignetting effect that you can barely know. You really can't see if you're if you're not looking for it. There, that adds a really nice effect. All right. Now, I'm looking at this image, and I'm thinking that there's one more step we can actually take with this. And uh, though most people would like to crop before the image, I'm actually just now noticing it, so I'm not going to be too worried about it anyway, especially since I'm going to be cropping non-destructively. So though I really like the way this image turned out, I think it can be better used at a smaller, at a smaller size, and then I can crop a little bit of this top portion out. So what I'd like to do is though I really like the image already, I think it's going to be a much more interesting image if we make it a little bit smaller to add a little bit more focus, something like that or so. And now as you can see with my crop tool selected, I've got it set to the hide option, meaning that even though I'm going to be cropping it, I'm not completely destroying or removing those pixels. You can see if I select everything and move it around, you can see those that information is still there. Definitely nice for going back and seeing the original. All right, and now you can see that I've cropped it. It's definitely added a nice effect, and I really think that looks better and much more interesting. All right, so F to go to full screen mode, spacebar to position my image, and shift tab just to bring back the right column here. The first thing we did was add a levels here to increase the contrast and make it a lot brighter, and then we added a softening effect using a reduced noise filter, a little bit unique there. Not many people use that. Then we lowered the opacity on there, to maintain some of those details and then added a nice vignetting effect and then cropped it from there. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Nate Bauer again. If you have any more questions, feel free to visit questional.com and ask away. I'll see you then.